All right, buckle up my nerds, because today we're gonna talk about the Sony a7S III. Yes, this is my official full review. Let's go. So it's been about almost two months now since I first used the Sony a7S III, and I've been loving using it ever since I opened it straight out of the box. We're gonna talk a lot about the camera, and so feel free to use the chapters down below if you wanna skip to a certain section. So let's start with first impressions. When I opened up the camera straight out of the box, it just looked beautiful, it looked so good. From the design, the build quality, and the ergonomics, I loved everything about the camera straight out of the box. Of course, you have the flippy out screen, that's great, but I really liked the bigger grip on the a7S III, where the grip on the a7 III, it really wasn't big enough and was almost uncomfortable to hold, especially because I use quite heavy lenses like the Sony 24-70 G Master lens. But when I put that lens on the A7S III, that bigger grip just made it a lot more comfortable to hold. Like, it felt really good. It felt right. It felt really right. And after using the camera on that very first day, I was super impressed with the overall image quality and really impressed with the overall usability of the camera. We'll talk more about that in a second, but as far as first impressions goes, I was impressed. Well, oh, five minutes in, I'm already hungry. Everything about the camera is just a huge improvement over all the other Sony cameras that I've used, from the big record button on the top, to the joystick, to the media card door. It was very familiar to use, yet at the same time, a big improvement over their previous cameras. Now, I'm not gonna get too much into the technical details of the camera. I'm sure you've seen lots of videos talking about those technical specs. I'll even list them here on the screen and you can see all those specs if you want. That's a cool feature, that's another cool feature. That thing is totally true. But what I do wanna talk about next is the menu. It is vastly improved over their previous menu systems, mainly because it's touchscreen capable. Like, I don't know why Sony never implemented touchscreen capabilities on their menu screen. It's just a standard to have that these days, but that's not the reason why the menu system is better on the A7S III. It is way more organized. Like, it's a lot easier to navigate through the menu versus the previous menu systems on older Sony cameras. Those menu systems sucked. But now the new Sony menu is just a lot easier to navigate through with their pages and their subpages and tabs. Overall, it's a way better menu system. All right, let's talk about photography on the a7S III. 12 megapixels. It's definitely not the best camera to take photographs. I mean, 12 megapixels can only go so far. Although it is good enough for things like Instagram, Facebook, and really anything online. But if you wanna make big prints, then maybe not the best camera to use. And when you do take photos with the a7S III, when you pixel peep, you'll see the pixels, like the pixels are huge. Where with cameras like the a7 III or the a7R series, like there's a lot more megapixels crammed into a photo, which is why photos taken with those cameras to look way sharper and more detailed. So if you are taking photos with the a7S III, just keep that in mind. However, the photos that I have taken with the a7S III has turned out so good because of the color science. The colors coming from the a7S III just look so good and so natural. Like when I post-process my photos in Lightroom, I don't have to do so much white balancing because everything looked the way it should look. Where with cameras like the a7 III, it had that green tint to it in the photos and it just didn't really look that natural. I mean, you can correct it in post, but when I was looking at the photos coming from the a7S III, it just looked really good. So if you're looking for the a7S III as like the perfect hybrid camera to shoot incredible 4K video and incredible photos, you're wrong. It's it's not the perfect hybrid camera. The a7S III is focused more on video and less about photos. If you are looking for the perfect hybrid camera, I would say that the a7 III or the a7C would be your options. Both those cameras are like split down the middle to take really good photos and really good video. But if you're like me, a creator that likes to focus more on the video side of things, then the a7S III is perfect. 90% of the time I use the a7S III for videos, but if I do want to take good photos, then I know that the a7S III is good enough. It ain't perfect and I'm not going to be able to print out huge billboards, but the photos that I have been taking with the a7S III, I've been pretty impressed with. All right, let's talk about the video capabilities of the a7S III. I mean, what do you want me to say? 
it's great. <laughs> the Sony a7S III is like built for video content creation. Like that's what it was made for. Filming 4K video on the a7S III has been such a good experience. And the fact that I can shoot in 4K 60 and 4K 120 and in 10 bit 422 video, obviously it's incredible. The dynamic range is great. The low light capabilities is of course incredible. And with 10 bit 422 video, that just allows you to color correct and color grade a lot easier in post. Most cameras in the prosumer world shoot in 8-bit video, and even though the footage coming from those cameras look generally good, 8-bit video is going to be limiting because it doesn't have as much color data as 10-bit video. I made a video comparing 8-bit video and 10-bit video, and when I was trying to color correct and push and pull the, the colors and tonal range of 8-bit video, it was very limiting, and I saw banding and artifacts, where when I was color correcting 10-bit video, it was a lot easier to push and pull those colors because there's a lot more color data in 10-bit video files. So I love that about the a7S III. You don't have to use those features if you don't want to. You can can totally shoot in 8-bit, but the fact that I can shoot in 4K 10-bit 422 video just, just makes me makes me really happy. Makes me, what can I, I'm just happy. All right, we are shooting at S-Log3 ISO 160 at f6.3, and I'm trying to expose where you can see my face and the outside um, evenly, and I think that looks pretty good. We'll have to see what it looks like in post, but from the screen, it looks, it looks pretty decent. Now, as far as picture profiles, I've been shooting an S-Log3 with the a7S III. The first time I shot with the camera, I did a low light test and I shot an S-Log3. And usually with S-Log3, you have to overexpose by two stops. I didn't do that the first time I was shooting. I kind of wanted to see if I didn't have to overexpose by two stops. So when I didn't overexpose by two stops, there was a lot of noise. So if you are gonna shoot S-Log3 with the Sony a7S III, you do have to overexpose about two stops. For me, I use the exposure values down at the bottom of the screen to help me overexpose the right amount. I adjust my camera settings until I see the exposure values hit plus 1.7, and it's usually around there that I know that my exposure is right. You can technically go up to plus two if you want to, just just be careful that you don't overexpose beyond that. Now I know shooting in S-Log3 and other log profiles can be kind of confusing. And so for people that don't want to shoot in those profiles, they just want to shoot videos that look good straight out of the camera, then I would recommend just turning off picture profiles and using the creative style neutral. I found that the neutral creative look is the most pleasing and most natural of all the creative looks. So if you don't want to mess with S-Log3, S-Log2, HLG, any of that stuff, then turn off picture profiles and choose a neutral creative look. And for those of you wondering, when it comes to photography, I don't use any picture profiles at all. Just straight raw, uncompressed, just Raw, raw, raw. All right, let's talk about stabilization and autofocus. Stabilization in the a7S III is incredible, especially the fact that it has active stabilization now. With active stabilization turned on, the camera crops in just a little bit and uses that crop to stabilize whatever you're shooting a lot more. All right, testing out the active stabilization on the a7S III. I have the 16 to 35G master lens at 16 millimeters. And uh, yeah, just kind of driving. It's definitely not perfect, and sometimes I would see the image jump, especially when shooting in 4K. It's probably all that processing, trying to stabilize the image and shooting in 4K, 10 bit 422, all that data just kind of processing. And so active stabilization is great, but it's definitely far from perfect. But what I love about the a7S III is that it has gyro data. And what that means is that the video shot in the a7S III has gyroscopic information embedded within the video files. And so if you take it to a gyro data app like Catalyst Browse, it'll take that gyro information and stabilize your footage in post. So in order to use the gyro data properly, you have to turn off all stabilization in the a7S III. That allows Catalyst Browse to properly use the data from the camera so that it can stabilize your footage in post. Because if you turn on any stabilization in the camera and then try to process it within Catalyst Browse, Catalyst Browse won't be able to use that data properly. So if you wanna stabilize your footage using the gyro data within the camera, you have to turn off all stabilization. It's pretty nuts, it's, it's really crazy, but I've stabilized videos, shot with the a7S III and stabilized it in Catalyst Browse and it just looked way smoother than I would ever shoot it handheld. Sometimes almost as smooth as a gimbal, believe it or not. So gyro data, A7S III, huge thumbs up. Now the audio from the a7S III is actually not too bad and you could totally use the internal mic of the camera if you don't have any other mic itself. It's not perfect, but totally usable. Definitely better than previous Sony cameras. All right, so now we're gonna do an audio test of the a7S III. First, we are hearing audio from the Video Mic Pro Plus and the audio record level in the camera is set to 10. Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. So now we're gonna unplug the mic and we're going to listen to the internal mic of the a7S III. And now this is the audio coming from the internal mic of the camera 
camera with the default record level set to 26. Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. As far as autofocus goes, it's what you'd expect from a Sony camera. Autofocus performance is just spot on. It doesn't have the product showcase autofocus like the Sony ZV-1. I freaking love that feature of the ZV-1. I was kind of hoping that that feature would be on the A7S III. It's not, unfortunately. Still, the A7S III has eye autofocus tracking, which makes autofocusing natural and accurate. Now, as a YouTuber, vlogging with the A7S III has just been such a good experience. I mean, obviously the flip out screen is very helpful to help compose your shot, but just knowing that the autofocus is spot on, knowing that the exposure is spot on if I do it properly, and knowing that the audio is going to sound good, it just gives me a lot more confidence knowing that my content is going to look good as I make content for YouTube. All right, so now let's talk about my post-production workflow with the A7S III. We're not gonna get into the photo side of things because raw photos are raw photos and they just work well in Lightroom, so there you go. But when it comes to editing 4K 10-bit 422 video on my computer, that's a, that's a bit of a different story. As of right now, it is so difficult to edit 4K 10-bit 422 video. I have a 2018 MacBook Pro, and so I might not have the best of computers, but editing a 7S III footage in Premiere Pro has just been really frustrating for me because, well, my computer just can't handle it. It might be Premiere Pro itself, it might be my computer. Still, it's just been a frustrating process for me. So in order for me to edit 4K 10-bit 422 video in Premiere Pro, I just simply have to try Turn those video files into proxies. It does take a while, like it's a, it's a long process to do, but usually when I'm done shooting, I just import my video footage into Premiere Pro, I right click, turn them into proxies, take a break, or just start editing the next day. So it is an extra step, not the end of the world, but I'm not able to natively edit 4K 10-bit 422 video. Maybe I should get a new computer. But editing proxies in Premiere Pro, super easy. And so usually I have my first round of edits done. And when I have my video mostly edited and the only thing left for me to do is to color correct and color grade, then I turn off those proxies and I color correct and color grade as normal. So again, it is an extra step, not the end of the world, but it just makes editing 4K 10-bit 422 video a lot, uh, a lot easier. Uh, at least for me. Oh, and the video files are like super large too, especially if you're shooting an XAVC SI 4K. Huge, huge files, so just make sure you have enough space on your computer. Speaking of codecs, I kind of go between XAVC S 4K and XAVC SI 4K. I'm very reluctant to use XAVC HS 4K because it's more compressed than the other two options, but I've been shooting with those codecs both in 10-bit 422 video, and then when I'm ready to edit, I just first turn them into proxies. So yeah, so that is my post-production workflow with A7S III footage. Now, if you are gonna shoot in 4K at a high bit rate, you gotta have the right media cards to handle all that data. The one that I'm currently using is a Sony Tough Card. It's the UHS-2 V90 version, and V90 is what you wanna look for if you're using an SD card. You can use a CF Express Type A card if you want to, I'm reluctant to, to use them because, well, they're more expensive and you have to have a specific CF Express card reader to import your footage into your computer. I'd much rather pay for higher end SD cards, mainly because I already have SD card readers, but if I can spend less money with accessories of the A7S III, then I will gladly do so. And if you are gonna use an SD card, then 64 gigs would probably be the least you should get. If you can afford it, I definitely recommend getting the 128 gig version if you can, because those 4K video files Sir, they're big mama jamas. They're big mama jamas. Uh, all right, battery life. Battery life on the A7S III has been, yeah, it's been pretty good. The Sony Z batteries are awesome and I have like five of them. And so whenever I'm out on a shoot, I just carry extra Z batteries with me at all times. And I've never really had to switch out batteries too often when I'm out on a shoot, maybe once or twice, but that's pretty much it. So as far as battery life goes, Awesome. Although when you do film for a long period of time, especially when you film in 4K 10-bit 422 video, the camera does tend to warm up. It doesn't overheat and has never overheated whenever I've used a camera, but it definitely does warm up. So just make sure to set the internal temperature too high when you're shooting with the A7S III. That just allows the camera to continue shooting even if it warms up and it does warm up. Okay, almost done. Let's talk about the best features of the camera. 4K up to 120 frames per second, that's a huge plus. Better color science, incredible stabilization and autofocus. The audio preamps of the camera are a lot better than previous Sony cameras. Bigger grip, unlimited video recording, flip out screen. There's like a ton of good things going for the a7S III, but there are a few things that I don't really like about the camera. One, uh, it's almost frustrating that you have to use higher end media cards to handle the 4K video recordings of the a7S III. Like, I know that's a given, but man, those CF Express Type A cars, like they're expensive, but you know, it is understandable. The other thing I don't like about the A7S III and probably the, the least thing I like about the camera 
is the fact that there's no crop mode when you're shooting in 4K. When I had the a7 III, I love shooting in crop mode. It was like one of my favorite features of that camera. So not having crop mode with the a7S III when I'm shooting 4K has been kind of a bummer. I can still use clear image zoom, which is always handy, but I do miss using crop mode when I'm shooting 4K video. You can use crop mode when you're shooting HD video, but if you do want to shoot 4K video, then you can't use crop mode. And the only other thing is uh, the 12 megapixel sensor. Although I don't really think that's a bad thing because in order to have the low light capabilities that the a7S III can do, you gotta have a 12 megapixel sensor. And for me, I'd rather much use a camera that can perform well in low light than having a high megapixel camera to shoot good photos. Like I said before, I can still take good photos with the a7S III. And if I did want a camera to shoot higher end photos, then I would probably pick up an a7C or the a7R4. But again, where most of the things that I do is video related anyway, the a7S III has been the perfect camera for me. Oh man, we did it. That was it, we're done. All this effort just for a camera, my gosh. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you have any questions about the camera, then let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to help answer your questions. And if you wanna pick up the a7S III, the links will be down below, but I am out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Would love for you to be a part of this community. Hit the bell so that you get notified for upcoming videos and I will see you in the next video. Okay, I'm done.